On today's packed episode of Locked On Cubs, we discussed the Cubs' win at the Field of Dreams game and what we thought of the broadcast. Also, we're going to talk about Tom Ricketts as he finally speaks out on the 2022 Chicago Cubs. And we're also going to talk about a new segment on the show that we're going to introduce every Friday. Should be very fun. Please join us. Are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to Locked On <laughs> Cubs alongside Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. It's been a fun run of shows. This week, five really good episodes, if we do say so ourselves, I guess. Uh, a lot of milestones on the program as well, eclipsing over a 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And thank you so much to you as the listener, as the Cubs husk, the Reds in Dyersville, Iowa. That's a corn joke. And uh, they win 4-2. to two. That's 3-1 and one on the week. It was a, a really fun game. We're going to get into all that. And uh, where should we start, Sam? Because the Cubs got three runs in the top of the first, and they never looked back. What'd you think of the broadcast? Did you? I, I, you know what? I was kind of going into it <laughs> cynical, um, and I enjoyed. It was it. excellent last year, though. Yeah, yeah, but the White Sox and Yankees of last year weren't playing, um, and and you know what? I enjoyed it. I, I really didn't focus too much on the on the quality of of, of ball clubs playing. Um, right. Shout out to John Smoltz, who, who announced that game um, the same day his father passed, which is, you know, that's that's crazy. Wow. So, so you know, shout out to him. Broadcast was good. Fergie Jenkins, who was my starting pitcher on my Reds-Cubs dream team, threw the ball out to Johnny Bench, who was my starting catcher. No coincidence there. <laughs> uh, some very fun stuff. Good atmosphere. You know what? I thought it was an overall good night. You know, the Harry Carey thing was was poorly received, but you know what? It is what it is. I'm not going to uh, over criticize that. As far as the ball game went, uh, uh, Drew Smiley was uh, terrific once again. Mm -hmm. uh, ki kind of odd that nobody really wanted him at the deadline. The Cubs can blame themselves for that for p p pitching him in that game against the Giants. Uh, uh, and like you said, big two out rally in the first that pretty much highlighted it. Nick Madrigal, who we may or may not speak on later on, had another three hit day. Good to see. And uh, that's five out of seven for the boys in blue, the North Siders, the Cubs, the boys of summer. I thought it was an enjoyable broadcast to answer your question about two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. No, and all, I mean, it was, it was Fox does a great job. They've done it two years in a row now at that site. First of all, it's, it's, uh, the setup there looks fantastic. At least they make it look that way. You know, it's only, it only holds about 8,000 people, but who cares? It's, it's right. one no, or it two games great. a year. Looks great. Enjoyable broadcast. The visuals are very compelling. The audio is high level. I thought well, the interview with Votto was was great. Oh, the interview with Votto was uh, the best part of the show. Joe, part Joe of the game. Davis is solid play by player, and Joe John Smoltz has been doing it for a while now. Joe Davis and John Smoltz care and know more about the Cubs uh, uh, more than Chambi. <laughs> well, Joe Davis would have been a huge pickup for anybody. He's only a few years older than us, but uh, of course, the Dodgers got to him. Um, I really enjoyed it. You know, the White Sox and Yankees last year, that game had the highest. TV ratings for a regular season MLB game since 2005. I don't expect to see a number like that when they're released tomorrow morning, but, um, you know, I thought from start to finish, it was just a compelling product. I think that's what MLB needs. And the Cubs played well again, and, and as they should with, with the opponents they've had this week, but Drew Smiley, is has been sharp all second half. Uh, Michael Rucker got into trouble, but Brandon Hughes bailed him out. Then he pitched a whole nother inning perfect. And Rowan Wick's been dominant in the second hey, half. Was there something going on uh, so, with the? Was yeah. there something going on with the radar gun? Did you because in the ninth inning it was saying that Rowan Wick was throwing like ninety. Yeah, that's that. That, that means it's there's a big problem with it. Yeah, because I mean, there's no way his velocity is down six miles an hour. No, because then that would be a major concern. Yeah, but I feel you know. I mean, I don't, you know, you you know my I thoughts. I think it was on a little it. cold. 
Yeah, somewhat. I mean, because they said his curve, one of his curves register at seventy two. I mean, that could have been right. Yeah. What what, what is this? Uh, JV. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's it's frosh baseball. Um. Yeah. No, I I really enjoyed it. The, the Harry Carey thing is something that I I heard about last night. And I was anticipating from inside sources. No, I, I'm trying to think of where I saw it. I think it was just online somewhere, and then I heard it on the score today. Oh. And um, I didn't think that's what it was going to be. Like a hologram. I, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to complain about it, though. It was, oh, you was... mean you just heard that they were doing something for Harry Carey? I heard the same. I didn't know it was going to be a specific hologram. I thought it was going to be just like a Harry Carey ghost. And it wasn't. It was like a replica, which was kind of yeah. Odd. It was odd. It was odd. It was odd. Uh, before the game was pretty cool too, with Griffey Jr. and Senior. Sure, very cool. And so baseball, you know, very emotional sport. And uh, the Cubs, uh, the Cubs played well for a national audience. Now, I will say, what what did you think about the discussion, the national TV discussion about the team? Because I believe a certain thing was planted today to a certain ESPN.com reporter, which we're going to get to next. What did you think about the discussion? What, which, what, what, what exactly you're referring Just to? Just overall, did, did you feel like there was a, a perception about the Cubs or about their plan moving forward on national stage? Did you? I, I, I maybe I, I mean, I, I was, doing no, I felt like they actually did a good job staying yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had, I, I did nothing stood out to me. Okay. Um, you know, the, the typical Contreras stuff, but, there was a little bit of that, especially early. Yeah, but that I mean that they they got they got time to fill. I, I mean we're gonna talk you know about that in a bit. But yeah, I thought it was, I thought the whole thing went fine. I, I really don't have many complaints. It's, of course, I, you know me. When the Cubs are winning, everything's fine. Could be the worst broadcast in the world. They're up four nothing. I'm loving life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Right. You're probably feeling really good right now. Yeah. No, I'm I'm a little buzzed. Is the Kool Aid uh, there? But I um. I uh yes it is. Okay. I um <laughs> yeah, I mean you know, I it, it was good. I I'd like I'd like to, you know, I was happy Ortega got an AB. It was important. Um <laughs> for Morell. <laughs> yeah, I did see you tweet about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if you're listening on audio, I'm Make it doesn't faces. come across on audio. Yeah, it doesn't come across on audio. I'm making Facial couple, expressions don't exactly couple, do it. Yeah, we did tag up at third with two outs on a great arm in right field. Nobody says anything. <laughs> uh, but it was a good day. But good all stuff. in all, good vibes. No, Brandon Hughes throwing the ball well. Man, does he look like a piece moving forward, huh? Yeah. No, no. Hey, I bring it back to high voice, folks. Don't worry, I'm getting a lot of things. It's coming. Just I'm waiting for the perfect time. All right. So Tom Ricketts finally spoke for the first time in months today, Sam, mm. uh, to Jesse Rogers of ESPN and ESPN 1000, and we're going to get to that coming up next. First, most of us have overworked livers, mm -hmm. but now it's easy to rejuvenate your liver health, and reignite your metabolism thanks to Liver Health Formula by Pure Health Research. As a listener to this program, you can try Liver Health Formula risk-free today and get a free bottle of Curb Fit with your order. Curb Fit is a safe and all-natural appetite suppressant, making it easy to say no to naughty foods. This makes it the perfect complement to Liver Health Formula. Go to getliverhealth.com slash MLB to learn more. To try completely risk free and claim your free bottle of curb fit with your order. Again, that's getliverhelp.com slash MLB to get started. And where we get started right here is with Cubs owner Tom Ricketts. Biggest news of the day. Speaking for the first time in a long time, Sam. Big, big news. Uh, woke up to this news. Great news. Look, as you hinted, why don't we tell people what they said first, Matt? Oh, sure, sure. So I got the two main quotes here in front of me. Yeah, this was uh, Jesse Rogers did a big piece this week for ESPN, and he actually spoke to Hoyer exclusively, and, and Ricketts yeah, provided a statement. I'm tired of listening to Hoyer already. Uh, Ricketts said, oh, really? Wait, I'm, I'm yeah, going to have to follow up on that yeah, later. It's just a lot of, lot of Hoyer lately. 
I'll be the first to acknowledge this is not the type of baseball Cubs fans deserve, Rick Amen. said. Our decision last year to move away from Cubs players who brought us a World Series title was tough, but we have a plan to return to championship contention by building the next great Cubs team around a young core of players, augmented by free agent signings, and we're making progress. The next quote, our moves over the past year and at the trade deadline have put us in a position of strength in both player and financial currency. We plan to be very active again this offseason, competing in the free agent market. So, as you know, this was not a coincidence that he leaked that this was brought today because we're no. this will be you know they're on the national stage. And look, Jed Hoyer said it, Ricketts has now said it, Ken Rosenthal said it, John Heyman said all it. the big guns. The Cubs are going to look like really, really bad if they don't make big splashes. Now, what quantifies as a big splash? Like you said, Matt, you're you're somebody that would be fine with basically the same exact offseason as last year. Big starting pitcher acquisition, big position player acquisition. To me, that's probably the bare minimum. But the good news is this. We are being affirmed what we have suspected on this show, that this year will be the last year of this, which is a really boring product. Now, I've said many times, and I'll just say it once here, I still think that this team should not be as bad as they are. And even if they make two additions, they still have major internal work with the margins, the managers, the fundamentals to really be a, a high-level competitive baseball team. And maybe that's what Ricketts meant, that this isn't the type of baseball Cubs fans deserve. Because, again, I don't think Jed Hoyer or Tom Ricketts thought the Cubs were going to be competing for last place in mid-August. I really don't. I don't think they thought this was a playoff team, but I really believe that Jed Hoyer said, hey, Tom, we're going to be a 75-82 to win ball club, and if things go right, maybe 85. If things go terrible, maybe 70-68. This was not what was expected. This has been a group of underachievers uh, for a multitude mm -hmm. of reasons. Right. But if they could clean that up, get some bounces going the right way, and be very aggressive in the free agent market, they're going to have a fun ball club this year. And it's going to be – you're going to have all the coverage here on Locked on Cubs. You can follow me at Sam Olber and follow Matt Cozy at Matt Cozy. See, I'm doing – you know what I mean? Doing a little <laughs> – little, yeah, little promo. Yeah, a little promo because – because if this right is your now, first time listening, we're diehard fans, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and, and right now we're having a good time, right? Yes. In April of next year, we're going to be having a great time. Oh, no, it's it's, it's going to be a rock show up in here. And, and then, of course, when the team does get very good again, which will happen. Which will happen. That that actually then goes to being a very nerve-wracking time because when I when I rewind back to the uh, 16 playoffs, I lost about five, six pounds. I was, you know, mentally and physically ill, um, basically until the, the 27th out that actually happened on November 3rd, not November 2nd of 16. Which was your birthday, by the way. The second, correct. Well, the, the prior day, right? Yeah, right. yeah, no, of course. I know what you meant. I know what you meant. Right, Absolutely. Right, right. And when people try and say they won it on the third, that's a load of you know what. They won it on my birthday, November 2nd. Right, right, right. Yeah. Fowler yeah, yeah. hits one deep to center field. Davis back. Drag. Well, it's one nothing. <laughs> by the way, we have not had a good defensive center fielder since Dexter Fowler. Go ahead. We haven't had a leadoff hitter since Dexter Fowler. Correct. Pretty much. You know, my, my, my biggest takeaway with, with this week is there was a, a clear orchestration. Okay, stay with me with the vocab. Yeah. Of, of, of the, the head honchos of the Cubs being a little more transparent. And I don't necessarily think these are all talking points, and it was just because Fox did the game. In fact, Fox didn't really dig in much. That's why I was asking you. Uh, I, I don't really think that was a major focus of theirs. They were more trying to promote baseball. Right. Yeah. But it's certainly a talking point as we continue to move towards the end of the regular season. Okay, this season is going to end. There's 50 games left. You're going to have the GM meetings. You're going to have the winter meetings. And at that point, it's going to be Jed Hoyer's time to shine. Because the clock is going to start ticking, I believe, in 2023. And with these comments from Ricketts, he is putting 
the, the, the a little bit of pressure, I think, on his president of baseball ops, Jed Hoyer, and saying, okay, you know, here's the cash. What's going to happen now? Because you did spend last offseason. Don't you think it's a fallacy when people say the Cubs were cheap last winter? Yeah, I think people more are just looking at the the overall payroll number, which is middle of the pack. But that's because of the trades that they made. They still did add. They, they still did did you know sign two major guys. If they keep signing two major guys, the payroll number is going to start creeping up. Right. Um, I, I I think I I think to your point last year, I thought they were more aggressive than I thought. But when people say, "Oh, well, they're still middle of the pack in payroll," yeah, because they're not. They, they weren't committed to anybody this year outside of Hayward. Uh, of of any of any consequence before they uh, they, they signed Suzuki and uh, Stroman Stroman so yeah I, I agree I, I I you know I agree I think it's a little bit much I mean again you and I agree they they go out and get Manaya and go and get Bogarts I'm pretty happy with that offseason yeah yeah and just improve around the margins and um, yeah right and, and improve, improve internally so 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 like and stop, we've seen that though stop run. Uh, I mean, stop running it now well, at the lower levels. Oh, you know, I mean, I mean, like improve the fundamentals with the big oh, league team. Right, right, so, right. So stop running in out. Stop making lineups that don't make any sense. Stop playing people out of position, you know, things like that. Yeah. And, and, totally, and you'll look totally. up, you'll look up and, and cause I'm telling you without any changes to this team, without any help, I think this team, let's say this team ends up at, at 68 wins this year, 67 wins. I don't know what they're on pace for. I know their schedule lightens up at the end or whatever. Let's just say 67 wins for the sake of it. Sure. Without sure. any additions and just and just being smarter, better, having better luck and caring more, that right there they'll be at 77. They'll be 10 games better. Just right there. And then you add in the you know a couple of free agents that maybe it takes you to 84, 85, and you have a nice fun season. And then the, and then the boys start coming up, and and you're looking up, and 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 it's October, it's October. And there's 20, a base hit in October 26th. And there's base hit to right center field. Cubs are going to take game one over the uh, Dodgers at Wrigley. Yeah, yeah, not the Reds. Yeah, <laughs> okay, who should not have been in the Field of Dreams game. Jeez, maybe that's my worst of the week. We're going to debut best and worst of the week next. First, we want to tell you about Blue Nile. Mm. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. Whether it's wedding jewelry or everyday fine jewelry, Blue Nile has an anniversary sale right now. Save up to 40%, 4 0 on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25 to 5% on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order is insured. Ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. So, Sam, if you're trying to, to buy a piece of jewelry for somebody and you're, you're getting it delivered, you can get that. You could sneak that in. You know, no one's going to see that, okay, because we know it's in discreet packaging. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. Okay, any chain updates? And, and comment below which one of us, Matthew or myself, will need to use Blue Nile for our girlfriends that don't exist first. Comment below and give a reason why. Go ahead, man. We also want to tell you about BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including all things baseball. Head to BetOnline.net or download the app to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts man beautiful and maybe save those comments i'm not sure i want to see those <laughs> <laughs> on our old show sam we did best and worst of the week uh it was about everything in life now it's about the cubs and we're going to debut that starting on this friday episode with uh what's happened this week for the north siders so i'll start as i always used to on our show uh and I'm going to start with best of the week. And I, you know, just passing you the ball. We have difference. And I'm going to do a little jab, step, step back three for Nick Madrigal. Uh, really nice week for him. Feels like eight for 20 since his return from the IL. Feels like this is the guy we were sold. And when you look at, I don't want to overreact, but when you look at his numbers before he got hurt, it's like 33 games. It's not a lot of games, so so I'm, I'm happy. He just didn't for, really play. 
I'm happy for him. I, I'm, I, he's one of my. He's probably in my top five guys. I'm excited to watch every day. Maybe that McKinstry acquisition also fired him up a little bit. You know, he's got competition for next year's club. Um, so that's my best of the week. I really, I thoroughly enjoyed watching Nick Madrigal slap the ball over the diamond and play a nice second base like I used to for the Buffalo Grove Bulldogs in uh, 2007, 2006, five. I don't remember. Okay. Well, you think you at your own bio, you'd get the, the year right. Dude. All right. So I got to pick a different one, right? Since you picked Madrigal. Yeah, sure. So my best of the week is going to be Fran Mill Reyes. Mm. The Cubs picked him up. You could say they took a flyer on him from the Guardians of Cleveland. The Guardians, by the way, have won five in a row <laughs> as, the, as the Southsiders are reeling. Uh, but that's, that's another program. Uh, Fran Mill is a player that signed through 2023 or 2024, I do believe. Um, so he even brings value potentially to the next good Cubs team. Maybe. Uh, what type of role he has, not not sure. That'd be, that'd be the elusive TBD, but um, I'm excited to see him DH the rest of the way and, and, and get some chances up at the dish and, and hopefully get some home runs as well and, and try to elevate the baseball a little bit more. How about worst of the week? Yeah, I don't want to be redundant. Um, my worst of the week would be what I opened the show with yesterday, which is which is which is which is Rafael. Yeah, you don't want to pile on Ortega, right? Yeah, I don't want to pile on Ortega. I mean, it's and again, it's it's not him. It's the guy playing him. That that it's not Ortega. He Ortega's job is to go play when he's told to play. Uh, like even yeah. today, even today, I want to watch Christopher Morrell, who had three bad at bats tonight, hit with a man on second and two outs versus a tough righty. That's a growth opportunity. Bringing in Rafael Ortega, who's hitting 231, helps nobody. How are we going to know? Yeah. So that's my worst of the week. Okay. Yeah, I have to say my worst of the week, which is going to kind of then be pivoted into a, a, a little bit of a best of with the Cubs, is yeah. I, I just – I never understood why, why it was this matchup for this game. Like, tonight was really enjoyable – but I guess I'm missing something. Why? You have two other teams in the division. And wasn't it been... wasn't it announced last year post deadline as well? Yes. So it's you knew, not, it's you not... knew they were going to be bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm okay. I mean, I don't want to pile on the Reds. I I would like to. <laughs> Man, you're really on your game tonight. Um. The Cubs, even though they're bad, are Should always have been Cubs be... Cardinals or Cubs Brewers. Well, or you could have done. I mean, the Cubs played the Yankees this year. The Cubs played the Red Sox this year. Yeah, you could you could have right. done any. I mean, you could have done any matchup. But yeah, I I I don't really see. And, and like you said, it's not like the Cubs Reds historically is a great rivalry. And then the Reds scared away baseball. There's no Field of Dreams game next year. <laughs> yeah, why 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 is that? They're building a, a youth co sports complex there. I guess it's going to get in the way of possibly doing an MLB game. I'm not. Mm. I don't know if that's true, but that's what they're saying. Let's jump into a couple messages. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. We have a lot of messages. Um, we got. We so, got to make sure we read every single one. We don't have to do it today. We won't have time. Right. We're going to read one today, and okay. then we're going to read the next time we're likely going to read these is for our Tuesday episode. Also. One reason we're not going to read a lot of them today is because I need to text people back today to sign their name. So my preference would be not to read those blind. Um, so I'm, I'm really jacked up that we have voicemails and texts in the inbox. But um, just please leave your name. And a bonus would be where we're calling or texting from as well. And I do whatever he says because he's in charge of the show. If it was up to me, I, if it was up to me, I just read all through all three of them. I just name people. I give I everybody old person's name. I give, it took I, give time. A, I give everybody a, 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 a former fake name. Hey, hey, good job on the show. Appreciate it. Why is Ortega keep playing from Randy Huntley in Dansville? <laughs> <Island>. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, no, awesome stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be Glenn Tom Becker in Ohio. It's gonna be Glenn Becker. Oh, it's like former be, Cubs. Yeah, all former Cubs. That's going to be Gary Matthews. Sarge listens to Locked On Cubs. Yeah, it's going to be Rick Sutcliffe. Oh, hey, Sutcliffe was that, – that could have been my best of the week. Sutcliffe Man, was really good last oh, night. Oh, she made me laugh. But he That's just has be, joy, genuine joy for the game. 
That's going to be Hack Wilson, who held the Cubs' single-season home run record until 1998 with Sammy Sosa, who should have been coming out of that corn and representing the Cubs, hit 66. Let's let's read from the start of the queue. This was and then he from hit 63, earlier. and then in 01, he hit 64. It's 360 home run seasons in four years. This is from earlier. I mean, I don't care what he did. There's a lot of cheating in the game. A lot. This is from earlier in the week. This is going to be Eric in Indiana. He says, here is a good question. Again, we'll determine that. Uh, but here, <laughs> here, here is a good question. Why do you, you have to? I mean, come on. <laughs> Eric comments on everything. Shout out Eric. No, no, Eric. No, no one. I'm performing, but Eric, Eric is uh, one of our best I'm, listeners. I'm, I love how I'm playing the good cop here. Finally, yeah, yeah. You know, you you make the jokes, and everyone call you me. And so this is going to be Eric from the Hoosier State. Do you think David Ross? No. <laughs> no. You didn't let me finish the question. Uh, if it's about David Ross, the answer is no. Thanks Unless for listening it- to Lockdown Co. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. I was going to say, do you want me to finish or no? Yeah. All right. Do you think David Ross will be the manager of the Cubs when they are ready to compete for a playoff seat in the future? Is it possible that Ross could still be the manager, but the Cubs could again uh, try to go for a big name manager if one is available in the future when all the top prospects are playing uh, on the major league roster? So Ross, Eric in Indiana, his claim would be, that Ross is a placeholder before the next great Cubs team. Yeah, I think it all depends on next year. I think I think if they they put out a competitive team next year, he'll get he'll get a shot in in 24. I think if they're bad again next year, he'll be the fall guy and he'll get fired. I think it's that black and white. Hmm. I like it. I like. It. What do you think? Short and sweet. Um yeah, when you break it down like that, I think that's pretty convincing because if if there's a better roster in place and and we see some some holes that we can poke into and and they're not winning as much as as uh, the, the paper necessarily projects, then you zoom in a little bit. Is that decision making? Is that lineup construction? Is it a combination of things? Leadership. You're, you're probably going to be able to look accountability for some of that. Yep. Leadership, accountability, wanting to win, caring to win. Be sure to hit subscribe for Locked On Cubs on YouTube and smash the like button on all your favorite Locked On Cubs content. We're also on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, and drop us a text like Eric in Indiana. Three one two eight three four four six three four. A lot more to read, uh, and I also want to figure out how to play the voicemails on the air uh, next week. Thanks for making Lockdown Cubs your first listen every day. Second listen, how about the Lockdown MLB podcast? Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. It was a great week here on the show. Thanks everybody for listening. For Sam Olver, I'm Matt Cozy. This is Lockdown Cubs.